Welcome back to the Morning Blend. Our next guest wrote a novel about a black teenager who grows up on the south side of Chicago. When riots break out in his neighborhood, he doesn't take sides because he doesn't want race to define his life. The book is called Everywhere You Don't Belong by Gabriel Bump. Now, the book was released in February before all the recent protests. We were supposed to have him joining us then, so we are thrilled to finally meet Gabe. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Molly. Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited to have you joining us. There was a review from the New York Times that reads, it's also social commentary at its finest, woven seamlessly into the work, never self-righteous or preachy. I bet that's praise that you like. Uh, yeah, well, I think that um, a lot of things that Tommy Orange said in that review, you know, really stuck with me. Um, and particularly that uh, like section, uh, I was a little bit relieved, right? Because I wanted this to be more a book that's more than uh, just a you know social book or commentary on social issues. I like that. The New York Times says it's both funny and heavy. So tell us about um, the main character Claude and his story. Because what I find striking is that he's relatively average. Uh, yeah, and that was the. A goal with the book is I wanted to just portray what it's like to be a young black man in America uh, and feel this pressure to be like either exceptional or, um, you know, someone that lives to a really high standard. And Claude is just this like bumbling, average, unspectacular kid. And I kind of fell in love with him pretty early on. I love that. An article I read said that teens today, and I think this is so true, that they're, 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 what's top of mind to them is their outward identity, activism, and being exceptional. You just mentioned the exceptional component. You grew up on the south side of Chicago, and so I wonder how much of your story is woven into this novel. And I also wonder if you were an activist as a kid or if you are now. Uh well, so I guess just in terms of my connection with Claude, like uh, our lives are pretty different, right? Like what kind of happens on the page uh, are pretty different. Uh, but a lot of things that happen emotionally in the book are pretty similar, right? Like this uh, kind of struggle to find uh, your proper place in the world, like against what society wants you to be. And um, I guess that I wouldn't really call myself uh, an, an activist, um, but I, I would say that, you know, in my creative work and in my life, like I do uh, prioritize, uh, like, you know, social equality um, and, and fairness right, and, and truth. And so I think that that comes through in Claude's story uh, is that, you know, he's just trying to like fall in love, right? He's trying to not get in trouble for not doing his homework. Uh, but society keeps like throwing all of these uh, problems at him that he didn't ask for. How do you think your your book would be received and maybe your book tour if it had been before the protests? Uh, well, actually, a lot of it did. So I went on tour in the beginning of February uh, and I got like locked up at home like the rest of us um, about two thirds of, of the way through. Uh, and what's been surprising, well, I guess what's been a strange aspect of, of all this is how um, like my book does talk specifically about, you know, a, a riot where uh, police kill an unarmed black man and kind of the, the social fallout surrounding it. Uh, so to see this part of my book that I wrote uh, five years ago, right, like that particular section, uh, play out in real time and then doing, you know, virtual events and having to talk about it uh, was, has, it's surreal, you know, it's pretty surreal. Are you as a black man hopeful about healing the racial divide in our country? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, like all of us, we should be hopeful, right, that, that we can uh, cure the ills in our society, right, no matter what they could be, because without hope, you know, life is pretty bleak. Um, I think that uh, the work, um, you know, hasn't stopped and shouldn't stop, 
to combat like racial inequality, right? And it's a fight that has been going on for generations and, and centuries. Uh, and now it seems like we have uh, some good momentum from uh, like all sectors of society. So that's, uh, you know, that's heartening to see. I like what you say about hope too. I wanted to thank you because you tackle the themes of anxiety and depression with Claude in your novel, which I think are so important. You've acknowledged in interviews that those are topics that we don't often talk about. So I appreciate <clears throat> the fact that you delved into those things. We ran out of time, but I just really quick wanted to say you went to the University of Missouri, didn't you? Uh, yeah, for two years. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I grew up in a, a suburb of Chicago, um, but I thought your experience at Missouri was interesting, kind of a cultural shock, because I felt the same way, but it was just interesting that we had that connection. So thank you so much, Gabe, for joining us. Yeah, well, thank you, Molly. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, and all the best to you. You'll have to join us again with your next book. We appreciate it. Now we yeah. want to give information about your virtual conversation. I know that you're having that with two Milwaukee educators that's coming up this week, Wednesday. It's with Nassif Rogers and Shana Lucas. It's Wednesday via Zoom at 7 o'clock, and you can tune in, but you do need to register. We have a link on our website, themorningblend.com. The book, again, is Everywhere You Don't Belong. It's available at independent bookstores and wherever books are sold.